This is a 2025 Genesis GV80, an updated version of the original SUV from the Korean premium brand with a new look and some new technology inside, but pretty much the same chassis and powertrain as before. And as you can probably tell, I am not on my usual drive route, I am not in my usual state, and I am not alone. Next to me is Brett Evans. He is the managing editor of Driver ID? Did car, car ID. Car yeah. ID, that sounds way better. <laughs> he is the managing editor of Car ID and he is a great driving partner to have. And we are going to talk about this brand new GV80. Indeed. There are two different powertrains and several different trims for the 2025 GV80. In fact, there are more than there were before. I will go ahead and put the list up on the screen right now. Actually, because of one of those new trims, the base price of the GV80 continues to be the exact same as the 2024 G80, which is an interesting mix. So the question is, does the new content and the same base price make this a more compelling mid-size premium SUV? Let's find out. I review all kinds of cars and I have fun every time. Please subscribe and join me. The base price of the 2025 Genesis GV80 is $59,050. That is the exact same base price as it was for the 2024 Genesis GV80, but the content is not the same. Of course, the price does go up from there and it does go up fairly quickly and gets all the way to this vehicle right here. This is a three and a half liter GV80 Prestige and it is much more than $59,000. I'll go ahead and put the price up on the screen for you to check out. All right, now is a good time for me to pull over and show you around and inside this car in a bit more detail. Looking at the front of the car, here's where a lot of the exterior design changes are pretty darn obvious. We have a new emblem that is now all metal and just me that we have new grill design. Now, the basic grill shape is the same, but now we have this two layer thick bar instead of a single layer thick bar and we have these larger diamonds and then smaller diamonds in between as a result and they've also added more chrome we've got this chrome around the perimeter but then more chrome for the lower uh, bumper right here we also have this really interesting shape down here these little like extra inlets right at the base of the bumper right there which I think looks really nice and interesting and then we have these larger air intakes off to the side over here and then these are called micro array lenses these are new lights so it still has the split design where you have body work in between the upper and lower lenses but then look inside and you have tiny little lenses in between and then your daytime running lights there and there now the hood itself at least to me looks pretty much the same we do have this new color it is called store green i'll give you another look at that in just a moment but i still want to show you what's underneath and there it is your twin turbocharged three and a half liter v6 375 horsepower 391 pound feet of torque now this is the same as what you had before the update powertrain effectively stayed the same the base engine is also still a two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 300 horsepower 311 pound feet of torque and windshield washer fluid is way off to the side right here looking at the car in profile you can see that it does retain the same basic shape it is the same size but we do have this nice store green color to look at as well and there is another really nice and I would say bold touch to look at, and that is this chrome element that starts at the lower bumper right here, continues and actually gets thicker as you go through the doors, continues on past the wheel, right onto the rear bumper. I think that's a really nice touch. They haven't changed, but I will go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen so you can check those out and let you know that I have a lot more information in the description. You choose between 20 and 22 inch wheels for the Genesis GV80. These are the 22s. They are the same size as before, but again, it's a new design. You start with these five big fat spoke rims, but then you have these nice polished metal look cut in between them. And then also we have these nice and big Genesis calipers right there. 
And yes, this is a square setup. The wheels in back are the same size as what's in front. Looking at the car from the back, this is mostly the same as it has been since the car was launched in 2021. But again, we have this nice chrome element down here. And actually, one thing I really like is Genesis went away from these kind of like faux exhaust tips that were like Genesis grill shaped on either side. It is still dual exhaust tips, but now they're totally hidden. One right there and the other right there. I think that's the way to go. I really like it. And because a lot of these things haven't changed, that's true of the cargo space as well. But let me show you. And that opens up to show you 35 cubic feet of storage behind the second row. And these two buttons right here, one push of a button and manually move this out of the way. And you get 84 cubic feet of storage and room for two. And as long as I put the privacy panel back, two touches of a button put it back up as well. Lovely. All right, let's look at the second row. The second row has less different than the first, but that is certainly not a bad thing. It offers a lot of convenience and its own climate control and USB ports and even AC power right there. I am five feet, 11 inches tall or 181 centimeters. And you can see that I have several inches of leg room. It's also got a pretty darn decently high seat bottom. So I have good thigh support as well, which means that I have less than a 90 degree bend in my knees. Also, I have headroom and I even have a little vanity mirror. Hello. And you can see that I also have heated and ventilated seats for the second row. That doesn't apply to the center seat, but as long as you don't have a third passenger back here, you do also have an armrest with cup holders. This is a very nice and comfortable second row. I am just starting to get rained on, so this might be a tiny bit rushed, but we have this really nice two-tone material here. We also have this nice beige to go with this green. We also now have Bang and Olufsen sound systems with these grills. And we were just told that these are custom to Genesis, these grills. You do have the usual controls on the door right here, as well as several controls on the seat right here, including ergo motion seat massage right here, and a whole bunch of lumbar support options right here. We do have a couple of buttons to the left of the steering wheel. Tilt and telescope is adjusted electrically right there. As you saw, I already started the car to show you the rear controls for the second row, but there is the 27 inch continuous screen. It is really thin. It is bright, it's clear, lots of pixels, high definition, really slick. And you have a lot of controls for it. First of all, if I use this button right here on the steering wheel, I can move the things going on in the center. And you can also, just by sliding this, get your menu of things going on but look you can see this never ends but then when you do pull up the menu you can see you have a lot of different options here including mood curator right here this is fun so you can play and get different scents and music and the screen lights up and does different things to establish a mood be it vitality delight care or comfort this does have apple carplay and android auto and it is wireless Almost. <laughs> there needs to be an over-the-air update that Genesis says is going to come in about a month that will make Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless, but for the moment, for this test car, wired Apple CarPlay. Moving beneath the big screen, we have another screen right here. So our first two zones of climate control are this touchpad right here. It's a nice lit screen and it works well. I certainly don't need heated seats in Texas, but cooled seat is nice. Lift this. That is where you have the USB ports, but also this wireless smartphone charger right here and another 12 volt outlet right there. Lovely. Beneath that, this is our command center for this big center console touchscreen right here. And beneath that, this dial is our Prindle. Over here, we have some options for the cameras and parking. This is a center diff lock right here. You can turn on and off the engine start stop when you're moving around and of course, drive modes. We have eco, comfort, sport, individual, and snow. 
Looking up, we do have a sunglasses holder. We do have an electric privacy panel for the moonroof. Lovely. Oh, but don't open, please. And we're not quite done because this rear view mirror is actually a screen for a camera in back to be a digital rear view mirror. There you have it, the 2025 updated Genesis GV80 in all its new screens and neat tricks and just generally really nice interior. And if you want an even closer look at the exterior and an interior of this car, I do have another video that goes into more detail. I will have a link in the description below and it should pop up right there. All right, let's dig into the powertrain. Now, the powertrain is, as I said, pretty much carryover. There were some tuning changes, little fussing with the drive modes and that kind of thing, but we still have as the base engine a turbocharged two and a half liter four cylinder that makes 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Pretty stout, but this has the larger three and a half liter V6 engine twin turbocharged this one and it makes 375 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque nice stout healthy numbers and I'll go ahead and put the torque peak up on the screen right now it actually has a pretty wide torque peak so we've got a lot of good grunt even at lower speeds and you feel it pretty much right away <laughs> <You know? laughs> that is healthy healthy acceleration from this not at all small mid-size SUV now, Brett, you drove this SUV yeah. first, and what did you think? Does that mean, how does the powertrain feel in this new updated car? You've alluded to it a couple of times. It definitely feels relatively carryover. There's not a whole lot of driving personality differences between the 24 and the 25. That's not a bad thing though, because this is still, as you're hooting it through, this is still a totally <laughs> capable, uh, totally capable machine. You know, it can handle the occasional corner. It's really quick. It's really smooth, best of all. You know, when you're, when you're towing into the throttle, you don't feel this massive hit of turbo boost all of a sudden. Instead, the car kind of pours itself down the road. So I really appreciate that about the GV80. I think that that's a really important point, and I think that's a straight strength of the Genesis, that it is smooth, it's applied well, so that you don't get abrupt, yeah. hot engages. Yep. Like, you get good transitions to things, and the throttle map isn't so aggressive as to, you know, just fling, fling you back in your seat and those kind of things. That is definitely a strength. and. It is a, it's a real uh, competent chassis that can handle the power with no trouble. Mm -hmm, for sure. But as both Brett and I are saying, I mean, it's pretty much carry over. So when I did the review of the 2024 Genesis GV80, this feels basically just like that. And given that, it should come as no surprise at all that fuel economy pretty much carries over as well. I'll go ahead and put those numbers up on the screen right there. They're competitive. It's not anything that will overwhelm you uh, or underwhelm you. It's just, it's right there in the middle. And you know, that is something where it's starting to feel a little weird that there's not any hybrid anything here. This is just a straight gasoline engine. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we do also still have the eight speed automatic transmission, smooth shifting one, as you saw and as Brett alluded to. And every single Genesis GV80 from the standard all the way to this prestige is all wheel drive. Even though I've already done it in the 2024 Genesis GV80 and it should be very, very similar here. Yeah, because I want to. Let's see how this car accelerates. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the sport driving mode and uh, see how it feels. All right, coming to a stop. Bit of brake torque, about 2200 RPM off the brake. <laughs> ah, yeah, man. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's healthy. Oh, good. Good quick shifts, good, strong, and again, smooth yeah, acceleration definitely. from this 2025 Genesis GV80. Now, the launch itself was a little bit soft. We had like this half a moment delay and then it kind of eased into it. So that is the other side of this smoothness we've been talking about. Yeah. It's smooth almost to a fault. Sure. <laughs> but I mean, generally, once you got moving, it was still really strong acceleration. I liked it in the 2024 Genesis. I still like it here. Yep. All right, let's talk chassis. Again, this is largely carryover in the chassis mm -hmm. uh, category, Brett, but 
it's not a bad thing. This, the GV80 definitely leans towards comfort and <clears throat> it gets tightened up pretty well in sport, but in the comfort driving mode, this thing is soft. Yeah. It really just floats over the road almost too much. Yeah, I think so. I think when you kind of hit hit bumps, it, it absorbs them really well, but you definitely kind of get that like secondary motions for, exactly. for a moment or two after you hit the big bumps. And that's, that's a bit of a bummer, but by and large, it is a very comfortable, very smooth car. Yeah, I mean, when you think about um, a premium SUV, especially when you think about one from BMW or Mercedes, you know, probably X5 the most, is you still have that like fast reacting, firm feeling um, chassis. And you get a strong structure here, but you don't get the, the firmness. You don't get that quick response feeling. And when you put it in sport mode, it does sharpen up a little bit, but it's still, it's still not the same, you know, like excited little puppy kind of uh, response that you uh, that you expect from some of the bigger German SUVs. Do you think that's fair? I think so. I think if you could mesh the uh, like the body control of the sport mode with the like initial uh, initial compliance of the comfort mode, I think you'd have a pretty impressive uh, pretty impressive suspension technology. As it is, it kind of like you either get very smooth and very comfy, or very firm and there's kind of it doesn't quite bridge that gap quite as well as uh, as maybe a GLE 450 would yeah a good example exactly but again there's a flip side and that is the comfort level and also the quietness this is a very smooth riding and very quiet interior the cabin isolation that you get in the GV80 in my opinion is top-notch I think so really really good wind isolation really good road noise isolation you know they put in a lot of acoustic glass the windshield the front doors they've got tons of sound insulation in here they did add more sound insulation for 2025 so that is one of the improvements and yeah i mean in terms of the luxury and the comfort side of this class of suv i mean they are right at the top i think i was honestly really surprised when we did that little acceleration run i looked over and you were going hur, 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 miles an hour and <laughs> i was very surprised at how quickly you were going because the car we, just we were going so smooth. we were going the speed limit and well, it was yeah, something. exactly the speed limit and the car was so quiet at the speed limit and also exactly maybe a little bit quicker than the speed limit there's the speed limit and then there's the speed limit in your heart <laughs> that's right you're going the speed limit in your heart I and the car was in. very quiet and very smooth the point is is that <laughs> when you need to like accelerate onto the interstate or anything like that you're not going to be disappointed for sure but yeah all the things we just said now of course that's true on roads like this and on the interstate i did get a chance to test it there let me show you that all right everybody time for a quick stint on the interstate one of the things that impressed both Brett and I was just how well isolated this cabin is. And here we are on this like rough, like seems like it's in the middle of getting work done uh, hunk of interstate. Even considering how rough this pavement is, it's, it's still not bad. Yeah, yeah, no complaints. We do have a whole flurry of driving aids. I will go ahead and put them up on the screen right now for you to see. Uh, of course, we have highway driving assist and a lot of lane keep assist and all those things, but more than that as well. Of course, one of those is adaptive cruise control, and I will turn that on right now. Okay, cruise control is set and highway driving assist is on, so I will go ahead and take my hands off the steering wheel. And yeah, there we go and it is keeping us curving around the road and it's keeping us pretty darn well centered in the lane as well. We are traveling at 78 miles an hour to go with traffic and at that speed, the V6 is spinning at 1800 RPM, nice and low. It is very much in the background here and now we're on a slightly smoother hunk of road and uh, you know, it's pretty darn quiet. You can hear a little bit of wind noise at this speed. It is actually a tiny touch higher than I expected. Yeah, for sure. Because the cabin seemed so well isolated, we were going 65 miles an hour. But now that it's a little windy and uh, we're going a little faster, you can hear some. But still, 
carrying a conversation is still really easy in this car. And also the uh, comfort level is quite, quite good in this car. I really like the seats. Again, the driver gets the ergo motion massaging seat on top of everything else. Um, all the different lumbar and everything I showed you. So there's a lot of comfort there. Really easy to uh, fine tune the climate control just as you wish. And we're on a pretty bumpy hunk of road right now and it's soaking that up really nicely. Brett, do you agree? Yeah, completely, absolutely. Even even better than in the uh, than in the city when you kind of go over those pavement imperfections. I think once you got some speed under the car, it does a really nice job of just ironing out, kind of gliding across the top of the bumps, which is really nice. Yeah, those those sharp hits, like those expansion joints or like a, like a jarring pavement change or something like that, that'll give you a little something, sure. but generally this is a very comfortable car. Yeah. And I would say, a fantastic highway cruiser. Yeah, most definitely. So yeah, really nice car on the interstate as well. Uh, Brett, what do you think of this updated Genesis GV80? The nice thing about it is there wasn't too much to fix and the alterations that they made didn't, you know, didn't overwhelm the, the basic goodness of this car. So I think that they've done a good job, Genesis has done a good job of kind of just tweaking it here and there. If you had a 2024 and you, you maybe got a little trigger happy, I don't think you need to feel sad that you didn't wait for the 2025. But at the same time, there's just a few little tweaks and updates here and there that just keep it compelling and keep it impressive. Yeah, I agree with that. I think these were smart updates and you know, they were good to show restraint. They didn't yeah. just change for change's sake. And they made adjustments, but they didn't make them in such a way to drastically alter the feel of this car. Mm -hmm. So you have a new grill, you have new headlights, you have a new emblem, you have new wheel designs on the exterior. But all those changes just kind of move the needle a little. It doesn't altogether change the look of the GEV80. And I think overall that was smart. In the rear, same thing, uh, subtle changes to the rear of the car, and I think ultimately they were smart. Is a little bit more drastic inside, but that is just more going with the trends, and we do have this really nicely executed 27-inch OLED screen to look at. It is nice and bright, good contrast, really easy to see and look at, but at the same time, it's not overwhelming. And you know we have this really nice, I believe they said 12 inch head up display. It's really clear, easy to look at, but also not overpowering. It just complements the rest of this interior. And I think the center console design yeah. is really nice. And yeah, it feels like a very premium, mid-size premium SUV. For sure. So if you're the kind of person that wants to try something new, you don't have to just be set in your ways and set in tradition. Genesis GV80 continues to be a very, very compelling choice to look at. I'm Robin Warner, thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so helps me out a lot and it will make Brett happy and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I do reviews like this all the time. Also news and car shows and engineering interviews and all kinds of things. So if you have any interest in keeping up with the auto industry in general, please subscribe to my channel. That also helps me out a lot and I'd also really appreciate that. Speaking of, Brett mentioned it earlier. I did review the Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 not that long ago. That is a very interesting SUV in of itself. So I definitely recommend checking that out. I will have a link to that review in the description and it should pop up right there. Or maybe you're interested in something else entirely. Well, like I said, I have reviewed a lot by now. Something's gonna pop up next to me. Hopefully that's something you're interested in. And if you do end up watching it, I definitely hope you like it. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you very much for watching. Also, courtesy of one of the new trims, the 2025 G80 is actually... GV80. Did I, what did I say? G80. Oh.